Hello everyone. I know the official release of Odin has been out for a while, but this is my first chance to get my Chameleon updated to the official release of Odin. It currently has the uh, one of the pre-release versions of Odin installed on it. So the first thing I wanted to do is fire up my existing Butterflight configurator and then save all my configurations so I have a reference to look at. So I'm going to connect over here. I'm going to go into the CLI. I'm going to type diff, which will show me the difference between the default settings and my settings. And I'm just going to copy and paste that into a note. Make a bunch of room at the bottom and just to be extra sure, I'm going to use the I'm going to do the dump command to dump all the settings. Scroll up, grab everything, copy, paste it into my over here. All right, now I've got all the settings I want backed up. And the next thing I need to do is get a newer version of Butterfly. Disconnect, quit Butterfly, and the place I'm going to go to go get everything. I'm sure there's a lot of places to get the files you need, but I'm going to go to the Helio Slack channel, go into the Odin release channel, um, click on the view pinned items, and this these are some great steps to follow to get the latest firmware and everything. Um, I'm going to download the latest Butterfly. Um, let's see which one do I want. I want the Butterfly Configurator for Mac OS X. So that's this one, I believe. Download. Save the file. Butterfly Configurator. And then I'm going to go back. And I'm going to get the latest Butterfly. And I'm going to save that file. Go and extract the zip file. Install the latest configurator. Drag it in my applications folder. Yeah, I want to replace the old one with the new one. All right, now it's starting the new one. And I can't open it because it's from an unknown developer. So I need to go into my system preferences, security, and it's general, say open anyway. Yes, I trust them, I want to open it. Now I have Butterfly Configurator 10.4.3. And I'm going to go into the firmware flasher. See it detected the Helio Spring. And I could choose the Helio Spring release from here, which is probably the exact same file as the one I downloaded, but I want to be extra sure that I'm using the latest. And you can follow these instructions for installing a beta one in the future. So I'm going to load local firmware, grab it from my folder, grab this one, click open, and I'm going to do a full chip erase, and click flash firmware. 
And now at this point, you can tell that I've sped up the video quite a bit. You just have to be patient and wait. And then when it's done, it's done. All right, now it says programming successful. So I assume my board has been updated to the latest Butterflight. I'm going to connect. Go to CLI. I think if you type version, it will tell you. Now it does say I have IMUF version 107, which is the latest, but that was also the same version that I had in the pre-release. So just to make sure I've got the latest IMUF, I'm going to do an IMUF update. I muff, you muff, we all muff. And that should update the IMUF. Click connect. And go in the CLI version. Still says the same. Now, okay. Now you can see that all of my configuration has been wiped out. Everything is set to default. And now I get to go in and <clears throat> go in and set all my settings and go out and give it a test flight. All right, go into the CLI and I'm going to copy and paste the settings that I know I want updated. Set the name, the resource. I know they say to leave arrow mode on, but I, <clears throat> I have that on a switch, which is basically on all the time anyway. My serial settings, my LED. All my modes. I'm gonna copy and paste just those settings in here for now. Hit enter. And here's how my board is flipped upside down. iBus, D-Shot 1200, small angle, dead band, my OSD settings, VTX settings. set my rates, what I expect them to be, and that should do it. Looks like it does reboot much quicker now in this version and connect to it sooner. Hey, now look, it's right side up. I move it around. Looks good. Looks like my ports are all set up. T TBS Smart Audio. D Shot 1200, 1616. It's the way I want it for now. I think I will update that and try Pro Shot 1000 in the future. But my ESC has not been updated to the latest version yet. Oh, those look correct. Fail safe is set up to drop. My PIDs look like I want them to be. These are all the defaults. I haven't changed anything with that. D is how I like it. My LEDs are set up. And I'm going to erase my black box. So I also suggest everyone take a look at the steps to install the latest firmware from the Slack and take a look at what's changed and what you might need to do once you've installed it. So I've already followed all these steps at the top to download and install the latest version. 
So things to know about this version of the firmware. The uh, buttered PIDs are now on by default for all profiles, which is awesome. Determ set point, weight, and determ notch all have no effect when buttered pins are turned on. And buttered pins are turned on by default, so those have no effect. They suggest that you leave anti-gravity off and that you leave error mode on. The buttered PIDs, there's a little explanation here, is the new PID controller. They also suggest using 3232 with Multishot or ProShot 1000. Um, if, you, if you need turtle mode, then you'd want to run ProShot 1000. But I believe you also have to make sure that your ESCs are at the latest firmware for that to work. Oh, that's what it says down here. To use ProShot 1000, you must update your ESC firmware from BLHeli. You need at least version 32.43. Um, I keep seeing this repeated everywhere that DSHOT 1200 was not designed to run at 3232 and that you will have packet loss as a result. So things won't fly quite like you expect. Alright, so at this point everything looks good. Quad's ready to fly. And it's time to go bring it outside and see how it works. Alright, this is going to be my first flight on the final release of Odin. It had been flying on a pre-release version for a while this final release i believe the biggest change is that it has elastic um elastic q factor probably it i believe it adjusts the q so it adjusts the filtering of the imuf uh automatically as you're flying i don't think i know much more about it than that um, hopefully that does some really cool things here we go arming and taking off it flies! A little bit of a punch out. Yeah. There's some wobbles there. And I'm also very rusty because I have not flown in, I don't know, a week and a half now. And there's some wind. That's going to affect it a little bit. Hopefully there's no mid-throttle oscillations or anything visible in the video. I don't see anything standing out in the uh, FPV feed. Check for some. Uh, that might have been a little bit of a prop wash there. If I try really hard. Let's see, is there still a little gap between these trees? Oh, yeah, a little bit.
time to come in. Voltage is getting a little bit low. As you may have noticed, I'm also sitting in the car because all those nasty little mosquitoes have recently hatched and they are a pain in the butt to deal with while you're flying around. New firmware, you should probably always check your motor temps when you do a quick flight. And they all feel pretty good. Rear motors are just slightly feel warmth at all and the front ones are basically cold, so that's good. So now after having a chance at home to review the HD footage a little bit, I have to say it looks pretty good for completely stock settings. Uh, there's definitely some room for some tweaks and some improvement there a little bit. There were a few bobbles when I hit the gas really hard and let off really quick. But overall, it looks really great for defaults and I'm enjoying it. <laughs>